Hey everyone, it's Cal Chuchesta here, the internet, and it's time for album talk about the new Beast Tass, the Depression Sherry. Me and Andy have been talking, and he says I should be doing more of these reviews, because Cal, you got good thoughts in your head when it comes to the music. So, Beast Tass is a music. And Let me out of here, you must out of my bag. The cover is red, as you see, and the album has songs on it. Lots of them. Like, so many. And when you hear it, it, hear, it hears pretty good. It hears, it hears real nice. <sighs> oh, bye. Bye. Come back. Come back. <sighs> <sighs> yes, I'm sitting. Why is that so hard for you to get? I'm sitting down. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Beach House record, Depression Cherry. This is the latest full-length LP from famed dream pop duo, Beach House, Victoria Legrand, Alex Scally, and I have been waiting for this record for quite a long time. Not just because I wanted to hear a new Beach House record, but also because I've been waiting for Beach House to change up their sound in some kind of significant way. Surely, a duo as talented as Beach House wouldn't just simply paint themselves into the corner of Dream Pop for the entirety of their career, would they? I mean, I get it, you're, you're really good at this genre of music. You're really good at making these slow, syrupy, heavenly pop songs with your keyboards and your drum machines and your slinky guitars. They were even good at it when they introduced a multitude of instrumentation onto their big breakout record, Teen Dream, which was actually pretty fantastic. And then they were even pretty good at it as they returned to more familiar territory on their next full-length album, Bloom, where once again we had a very simple, hazy sound complementing some very lovely ballads on this record. It was a solid record, but I just wish it explored and I wish it forged forward in the same way that uh, Teen Dream did when it came out. Bloom was not really satisfying in that sense. So going into Depression Cherry, I was hoping that that's what Beach House would deliver this time around. And that's, that's actually what I thought I was gonna get when I heard the initial single from this thing, Sparks. And I will talk about that track later in this review, but I, I will say overall, Beach House does sound like they are experimenting on this album, not so much with instrumentation, but more with sound, just the, the, the mixing, sing, sing. At their core, Beach House still sounds like the same duo. They're still making this really slow, serene, beautiful music that you lost your virginity to very awkwardly back in high school or college, which is why Beach House is so hard to listen to today for you. But Beach House's approach this time around is nowhere near as hazy and um, enveloping. Alex's guitars on this LP are noticeably clearer, brighter. Victoria's keyboards are nowhere near as reverb soaked. You're not getting these keys just, just so drenched in effects that they are creating this wall of sound and cascading over one another. Rather, the keyboards sound relatively dry, as do the drum machines a lot of the time, and even Victoria's vocals. I mean, she's taking a different approach to singing this time around, not really giving us those deep, bellowing vocals that we've heard on numerous records before. She's kind of singing in her upper register on numerous tracks here, and it doesn't sound too bad. And it's cool that we're getting Beach House sort of without all the effects. We're getting them in what feels like a bit more of an intimate setting this time around, but I don't think this change is a completely for the better. With every sound in the mix here being so tangible, I don't really think Beach House has that cushy atmosphere that kind of softened the blow of just how simple and instrumentally skeletal a lot of their songs are. In a way, this album sort of helps me realize just how kind of key to Beach House's equation that atmosphere, that reverb, kind of was. Because as a result of these tracks just being not so drenched in effects, any issues uh, in the instrumentation, in the songwriting, 
on this record tend to be glaring because there's not really anything to sort of hide behind, like the sudden ending of the track 1037, which kind of left me feeling like they didn't really have an end written for that track, or even the song Beyond Love. And, and this song I actually did like. I think tune-wise, it's one of the better cuts on this record. And I actually enjoyed Victoria's lyrics on this track, some of the most direct and loving lyrics I think I've heard her put into a song yet. But then there's the track Triple P, where <laughs> the guitar line on this track, it just kind of feels like Beach House reincorporating old ideas from older records. There's actually quite a bit of deja vu for me on this album. Uh, maybe it kind of hurts to be very familiar with Beach House at this point in their career and then listening to this album. Uh, it just really feels like a rehash, except for the fact that Victoria is kind of incorporating these spoken word vocals here and there in the track, though I wouldn't say they bring that much character or make the song interesting since those vocals tend to be kind of muttered and obscured, which is kind of weird because typically on every other track here, vocals pretty clear, pretty intelligible. And these spoken word vocals just land on what seems like a Beach House instrumental that could have landed on any one of their previous records had it just been, you know, layered more heavily in effects. And the song is actually one of the longest tracks here and tediously finishes with this repetitive guitar line where I think things are supposed to be building underneath it and kind of, I don't know, just slowly ascending or creating some kind of emotional intensity, whatever it's trying to do, it, it just really loses me after a while because there's there's not that much going on. And the song Sparks that I said I would mention again earlier, the lead single off of this LP, I don't care for it as much in the context of this record as I did when I initially heard it. And I gave several listens when it first came out, I liked it, but then listening to it on this record, I just kind of felt like I was listening to a totally different track. It's it's really strange. It's almost as if I got reintroduced to the song again for the first time, but then I had the opposite reaction of when I had first heard it. And I guess my reasoning this time around, now that I'm more familiar with the track, is that I like the textures of it. This track is really shoegazy. It's one of the thicker songs here, and it most definitely feels like a nod to My Bloody Valentine, especially with how just textured and burning the guitars are, as well as the uh, keyboards are kind of sour and strange. But then as I listen to this track more and more, melodically, there's not a single thing I like about this song. The chord progression is like hideous. The vocal melody is completely unlikable, and so are the guitar leads. Again, melodically, nothing about this song is enjoyable. On this record, I just kind of got the feeling that Beach House wanted to do a more upfront album, but didn't really have the, the fantastic songwriting that usually appears on their records to, to back it up, at least not most of the time. Or the tracks on here that are actually pretty good songs, they didn't flesh them out with their normal array of effects, so they feel kind of bare and unfinished to a point. And I really don't get what point they were trying to prove by essentially stripping out the atmosphere, stripping out this essential part of the Beach House song equation, but not really changing much of anything other than that. You'd figure if they wanted to step out past the reverb a bit, they would provide something new in place of it, or maybe reveal something that was being obscured by the reverb, or use that space not being taken up by reverb to add more sounds or more instrumentation or just different musical approaches, but they, they really don't do that. The changes that Beach House does make on this album are so faint that they barely register. Sort of like on the song Bluebird, as well as Wallflower, tracks that I don't really mind musically uh, and, and song-wise. I don't think they're bad tracks, but again, they just kind of feel brief, a little unfinished, and if there's any noticeable change about these tracks, it's that the uh, drum machines, the beats here, do feel like faintly, faintly danceable, like there's a little bit of a groove here and there that pops up, which is a little new for Beach House, usually not a, a, a duo that embraces the groove, but they do a little bit here, and um, it's, it's not bad. I wish they just went a little harder on it, so this record would feel kind of distinct from their other releases. I think the only track on this entire record 
that really impressed me through and through from beginning to end. Like there's not a single thing I would change about the track. There's not a single thing unlikable about the track is actually the opener levitation. And, and personally, I'm pretty picky when it comes to my openers. Uh, there are a lot of good openers out there, but not a lot of great openers. There's, 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 there is actually an atmosphere around this track, unlike many of the other songs here. And it's got a lot of layers to it. And for whatever reason, the atmosphere on this track it feels like it accelerates as the song moves along. I actually feel like I'm moving when I'm listening to this track. It's like taking a hot air balloon up to heaven. And Victoria Legrand's vocals on this track are a perfect compliment, not only because of just the way the instrumentation feels like it has the strong sense of momentum, but also because uh, they open up the record and you get these lyrics on this track talking about, you know, come with me, I want to take you to a place, oh, come on, come on, and it's just so alluring. And by the time the track is over, I'm just like, yes, I want to come with you, I want to go, take me, take me with you. And then once I'm there, it's like, I want to go home. I think the only other track that, that I really just kind of fell for a little bit was the song Space Song, where uh, there's actually a, a really cute kind of boop, 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 little uh, keyboard line in there. It actually feels like uh, I'm listening to a tune about a little cute baby spaceship or just like little space voyage. It's precious. And uh, th this actually is one of the few moments on this record that I would say where Beach House takes this space, this newfound space, as a result of getting rid of that reverb and kind of being more upfront, being more clear, having the instrumentation be more tangible. And uh, they actually make use of it with, you know, some extra keyboard layers that are very pretty and very quaint. I wish they did that more often. Um, I think Beach House kind of, uh, I don't know, Re revealed themselves a little bit as a one-trick pony on this album, inadvertently. Uh, again, they stripped out that essential bit of the Beach House equation just stripped it away a little bit, not even entirely, but a little bit. Uh, and, and, and as a result, I feel like there's so much less majesty here. There's so much, there, there, there's nothing mysterious about Beach House, which I guess, uh, without really taking it into account, was was maybe an appeal of their music that it was so gauzy and it was so hazy that it was sounding like it was from this dream world and coming from this other land. And now that everything feels so real and so upfront and so, you know, clear and unobscured, it's just kind of like, eh. Then we have the closing track on here, Days of Candy, uh, which is this album's attempt at giving us kind of a grand, satisfying closure. And it's not too bad of a track, but in context of this song, I can't help but think about the rest of the record and just how unsatisfying the album itself is. Like, why such a big finish to such a spotty album? And it's not like Beach House don't know how to write songs with with decent finishes or just like not cut a song off entirely or not structure an album or just not deliver a solid album. They've done it several times over. And it just seems like this time they've they've just thrown caution to the wind and they're just like, Ugh. the album's out. Still, a lot of the tunes on here weren't too bad. The performances were okay. And, you know, with Beach House, uh, I, I feel like even when they're not coming out with a fantastic record. There is kind of a baseline of, of music and songwriting talent here that keeps this album from, you know, being completely unlikable. So this album has at least that going for it and a handful of decent tunes too. The issue is that many of them just feel kind of unfinished and, and bare bones, or in the case of Wildflower, the, the sound of the keys and the, and, the, and the sequence drums are so plain that it just kind of feels like Beach House is really missing the, the aura, the glow that typically makes their songs sound so gorgeous. Uh, without them, while the tunes may be decent, the aesthetic's not there. And I, I think uh, it's really important. I think maybe they underestimated that on this release. I'm feeling a strong 5 to a light 6 on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? If you have, what did, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Beach House, forever.